ahead and draw. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of our live stream, My Journey to the Trinity. Ah, oh, dude, I want to point to it. Okay, there you go. See? Point to it. Yeah, well, I'm seeing you live here now. Okay, so uh, we have with us a... Uh, Jai's up, my friend, the loser, Jai. Jai, you still up, man? Usually you're sleeping at this time, brother. <laughs> and there is a delay because you're on StreamYard. There's like a 10-second delay from... 10 seconds? I, yeah. That's how it is on YouTube. Wow. I use StreamYard, too. There's like a 10-second delay. So. All right. Well, welcome, Sam. Well, it's great you, to have man. you uh, here today again. And uh, Christ, yeah. praise be to God. Uh, you want to go? Want to go ahead and pray for us? Yes. Let's pray. And yes. Start. Yes. 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 We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you <clears throat> first and foremost for loving us and blessing us and granting us the grace of the Holy Spirit to know you, the only true God, <clears throat> who, in union with your Son, the Lord Jesus and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> is worthy of all praise and worship and love and adoration. Just because you are God, that makes you worthy to be loved and praised. <clears throat> and so we thank you, Father, and we thank you for the, your gifts and your graces. The greatest gifts you gave us is your Son, the Lord Jesus, who became flesh and died for us, and your Holy Spirit to fill us and seal us and sanctify us. So, Father, we ask in the name of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless my brother <clears throat> and bless me and fill us with the Holy Spirit to bless your people, your children who are gathered, born of your spirit, born of your love, purchased by the blood of the Lord Jesus, your heart who became flesh. And Father, I ask that you cleanse us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Forgive us for all the sins we've committed. <clears throat> those that we are aware of and those we're unaware of, cleanse us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Crucify our flesh. Destroy our lusts, our sinful passions, passions and the fruits of our flesh to walk in the life of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit and perfect self-control, Father, so we can honor you, love you, and glorify you by our deeds, not just paying lip service. May the Lord Jesus, your Son, increase in us. And Father, use this session to bless your children, the church, and to convict those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, whether Muslims or other anti-Trinitarians. Bless this session and fill us with wisdom and knowledge and power from your Holy Spirit. Take over the session. Take over our lives to love you and worship you even unto death, for you are worthy and we love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. And Holy Spirit, we love you. Give us the grace that we need, the health that we need, the holiness we need, the self-control, self-discipline we need to magnify Jesus Christ and delight us hard. Never shame him, never blaspheme his name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Yeah, my name, Father, Holy Spirit, watch us. Oh, my God, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I've been driving, guys. You guys know I've been driving from one state to another state. I won't mention where the state is for safety reasons. We want to make sure our brother in the Lord Jesus Christ is safe. And so do me a favor. Do pray for him. Pray for the ministry. We want to help this brother to help his YouTube channels go viral. Anytime you have a brother or sister in the Lord Jesus Christ who is live streaming, who's starting a YouTube channel. We need to get all the soldiers of Jesus Christ to rally behind them, <clears throat> to like their videos, to subscribe, and also invite others to do so and pray for his financial support. Pray the Lord Jesus will provide his daily bread and my daily bread and watch over us for the glory of Jesus Christ. And do pray for me um, tomorrow in the morning. He's been uh, gracious enough that when I was going to that state, he let me sleep over. Now that I'm returning to my state, He's letting me sleep over again so I can be refreshed for the morning. So bless this brother and your prayers and your support financially. And you can support him right now by hitting like on the YouTube video. Like it and invite folks for the glory of Jesus Christ. So take it Thank away, brother. You. What are we doing? Thank you. Well, you know, uh, when uh, I knew that you were going to be here again, it was like uh, you, you blew our mind last time. Oh, I did? You gave us so much uh, just... I mean, really, it was so excellent. And so, uh, you know, when I, uh, one, you know, one of the things that I just want to tell you, you know, I always, I like to go back to share my own experience as an ex-Muslim, that one of the biggest problems I had 
and and you know who God used in my life was the Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, amazing! Because I was I was I was explain that how they do that. Explain you that. know because um, having come from a Muslim background, the issue of the Trinity, uh, we're so indoctrinated against it. You know, in the Quran, it says that we worship three gods, and that it's the mother, father, son, and just there's so much misunderstanding, and it's three gods, and so. Uh, when I became a Christian, you know, I just like, I always like to share this, that when I got saved, it was Easter, this past Sunday of 1978, the Holy wow. Spirit came on me so powerfully, and Amen. Jesus was right in the room. And so it's like I had two of the members of the Trinity were in the room with me, that the Holy Spirit that came inside of me, and then Jesus was right over there. And I just remember that. And, and so in my, in my spirit, I know about the Trinity. It's not a problem in my spirit. But getting it to my mind was a little bit difficult because we've been so indoctrinated against it. And so now I've been a Christian 43 years. But, you know, you know, Sam, I just uh, I really uh, I, I so appreciate your teachings on Amen. the Trinity Praise our God. because they have just you've been so clear about it. I think a lot of people are very timid to talk about it, you know, but you're not timid. And, and so be, with that. You've really given me a great uh, new uh, desire to learn more about it, as well as to to talk about it myself. I agree. So I, I really appreciate that. And so anyway, I'd really like to just talk sure. about the Trinity we because uh, there's many aspects of it that I'd really like to uh, to get to if we can. Um, you know, one thing that I was wondering if you could tell us just a little bit. I know that after. Jesus ascended, and after yes. the founding of the first church, there were a bunch of different heresies. Yes, yes, yes. of the about the Trinity. Yeah, Most the of them had to do with the Trinity. Can you tell us some of sure. those heresies, the main ones, because some they they, they exist today. Right? Yeah, everything. And just the guys, if you're wondering why I'm looking at my phone, is because I'm looking at the comments on YouTube. He's also live on Facebook. Invite more folks and pray the Holy Spirit will fill us to glorify Jesus Christ, and pray the Holy Spirit will save us from error. And perfect our ability to recall scripture and the facts for the glory of Jesus Christ. So we can love the Lord Jesus and obey the Lord Jesus Christ, not just be lip service. So if you're wondering why, don't let me distract you because I'm looking at the common comments. Even though they're here, I need glasses. Oh, I and, yeah, I do. I, I've been delaying it, but pray for me, guys. So pray. <laughs> no, I, mean, I need my, my own so I can see. See, he wears glasses. Do pray. God has been pleased in his mercy to help me to get healthier. I've lost weight. Pray in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. I keep it off. Pray the Lord Jesus grants him health as well because we want these soldiers around in Jesus' name. Now, let's talk about these heresies. One of the earliest heresies that you see arising even in the lifetime of the apostles. Again, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to illuminate me and everyone else to recall these facts correctly, right? You, you see this particular heresy already arising in the lifetime of the apostles because we see the apostles addressing this particular heresy. Radical moderate, I know this guy. You got to block him right away. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, He's the only one who laughs at my jokes, okay? Well, that's probably why you keep him around. Now, this group, it, you ha it comes in a variety of flavors, but today scholars... <clears throat> refer to this particular group in all of its varieties as Gnostics or Gnostic. Gnosticism, right? If you read 1 John, for instance, you'll notice that John, in 1 John and his second letter as well, 2 John, he refers to a false prophet, a false prophet. He refers to a false prophet as someone who denies that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Christ has come in the flesh. He goes, test the spirits. In 1 mm -hmm. John chapter 4 in particular, right. he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. Whoever denies that Christ has come in, come in the flesh, that one is the Antichrist. Now, you may be wondering, why is John saying one criterion, one criterion of a false prophet who's inspired by an evil, unclean spirit, who's not speaking by the true spirit, is that he denies that Christ has come in the flesh. Scholars, because of those statements, believe that John was dealing with a group that they call proto-Gnosticism, meaning 
a form of Gnosticism that was already on the rise in the lifetime of the apostles that then became full-blown in the second and third century. Now, what is Gnosticism? The word Gnosticism comes from the word Gnosis. These were Greek converts to Christianity who mixed Greek philosophy, Greek ideology with Christianity. Now, among the Greeks, <clears throat> they held to the belief that matter was evil. This body was evil. What really mattered, pun intended, was the spirit. Pun intended was the spirit. So to them, redemption, salvation was when the spirit would discard this body, this material body, and you'd continue to exist as a disembodied spirit, the immortality of the soul, right? Soul lives without the stain of this material body because matter is evil. Because of that <clears throat> worldview, these converts of Christianity brought that worldview into Christianity, corrupted, perverted the pure teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles, and depicted Jesus as a Gnostic or someone who held to the same view. So there are at least two forms of this Gnostic heresy. There was a view that said, that Christ only appeared as a man, right? Dokain, dokao, sorry for butchering the Greek, appeared. So Christ appeared as a man, but wasn't actually flesh. Mm. He didn't become flesh. He didn't become a true human being. He didn't have a physical body. That's why John says, whoever denies that Christ has come into the flesh mm. and abides in the flesh, he's an antichrist, wow. right? Now, there was another form of Gnosticism. This form of Gnosticism taught there was a human Jesus indwelt by the divine Christ. And some of them believe that the divine Christ came upon the human Jesus at baptism. And then at the oh. cross, that divine Christ left him. Oh, my gosh. Right? Docetism? Or? Yeah. Well, the first form is Docetism. Docetism. Docetism, Docetism, Dokain, sorry for the butchering of the okay. Greek term. You guys forgive me, and I'm going by memory, but I trust Holy Spirit to enable us to recall the facts perfectly for the glory of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Not only recall them, but live them out for the glory of Jesus, right? Amen. That view says the divine Christ only appeared as a man, like angels in the Old Testament or angels in the New Testament. Angels will appear as men, but they're not actually flesh. Okay. They're not actually human beings, right? Similarly to Christ. Now, the other form of Gnosticism, the other form of Gnosticism says there is a divine Christ and a human Jesus. That actually, ironically, is what we would call Nestorianism, right? I mean, the Nestorian heresy. What was the Nestorian heresy? That there's a human Jesus that's united to the divine Christ. Well, there were these so called Gnostics that believe the divine Christ, because he's pure and will not be defiled and tainted by becoming flesh, he united to the human Jesus. And some believe this took place at baptism. When did this union between the divine Christ, who is pure spirit, he's spirit and he's pure and would never corrupt himself by becoming flesh. When did he unite with this human Jesus? At baptism and then left him on the cross. So this is our earliest heresy. But notice... What's interesting about this heresy, this heresy does not deny that Christ is divine. Now, here's a, an additional problem. This heresy believed in aeons or emanations, right? You had what they would call the monad and then the pleroma, and then you would have emanations from them. In other words, when you went to the highest level, you had this supreme, absolutely pure divine being. Right. And then from that divine being, you you had emanations of lesser divinities. Oh. So as you got lower and lower on the totem pole, these divine beings were less divine than the aeon before it. Okay. And now some of them blasphemously taught that on the lower totem pole is the one responsible for creating the material universe. And that was the God of the Old Testament. And that God of the Old Testament is not the pure deity or the highest oh. level of deity. He's on the lower rung of the emanations, oh. the pleroma, right? Oh and because he was not absolutely divine, but less divine from the emanations that preceded him, 
he was able to create this material world even though matter is evil. And Jesus, or the Christ, not Jesus, the Christ, actually is closer to that absolute divine being, and therefore he came to liberate us from the God of the Old Testament. <laughs> oh. uh. now again, hopefully I'm recalling the facts correctly. If I'm mistaken, <laughs> forgive me and let me know. May the Lord Jesus save us from error. But oh, wow. So to, to these Gnostics, the God of the Old Testament, some would call him Yahuel, right? Right, Yahuel, Yah, Il, God. He was on the lower rung of the totem pole of these emanations, pleroma, right? <clears throat> and Christ is higher than the God of the Old Testament. And he came secretly, stealthily into the material world that the God of the Testament created to then liberate the people from that tyrannical God and teach them that salvation is liberation from the body. For you. Uh, uh, now, what's interesting about that? Notice that this heresy affirms the deity of Christ. But <laughs> what they had a problem with, <laughs> what they had a problem uh, with, was the humanity of Christ. Uh, so, notice the first heresy wasn't a denial of the deity of Christ; mm -hmm. it was more of a rejection of the humanity of Christ. Mm. So they didn't have a problem with the divine Christ. They had a problem with the divine Christ becoming human, becoming flesh. Wow. wow. So that's... That's that's Gnosticism. Yep. Huh? Now, okay. another heresy that we find arising in the second century, third century. You, you know, I just want to say one thing about that because it makes me think of also, sometimes Muslims, like when they say, when you when you say there's three false on the Holy Spirit, they're going to be fighting, like who's going to be the greater and who's, you know, it's like they're competing with each other, you know. Yep. And it makes me think, along with the, what you're just saying, you know, when they're saying that Jesus stealthily came in, <laughs> but Jesus said in the gospel, I came, but I didn't even come of my own will. Yep. I came before the, because the Father sent oh, me. Oh, but your gospels are corrupt. You need Gnostic gospels. Oh, so they, they've got that too. Well, huh? no, because uh, <laughs> I, I forgot to mention this, I, because I'm assuming people know this. I shouldn't assume. We actually found the writings of these Gnostics. Okay. In 1945, Nag Hammadi Library. Ah, Najah Hamad. Yeah. Najah Hamadi in Egypt. They found a treasure trove mm, of their Gnostic. writings that had been buried, mm -hmm. but was found in 1945. Now they've been translated. Okay. Now, no serious scholar believes that these writings, some of them are attributed to the apostles, are first century eyewitness accounts. They'll tell you later latter part of 2nd century, 3rd century, 4th century. Among them is the Gospel of Thomas. Thomas, yeah, because right. I, I knew that came from that, to History Channel's favorite. Yeah, so, so all serious scholars admit these are 2nd, 3rd, 4th century forgeries, and many of them are in Coptic, but they believe these are translations of original Greek mm. because they originally written in Greek. Okay. But they'll tell you that even the original compositions, second century, third century, they're not eyewitness accounts. They're mm. not written by the eyewitnesses of Jesus or their followers, and they're not first century documents. They will tell you if they're serious scholars like Bart Ehrman, mm -hmm. who's an expert at these uh, forgeries as well as the New Testament, he will tell you that the only first century gospel accounts we have are the gospels of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Even though he doesn't believe Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark, or Luke, they, he believes these were anonymous gospels that the church later ascribed these names to them. He will tell you, nonetheless, though anonymous, they are the only first century gospel accounts that have come down to us. You know that there was, you know what, I better shut up. Okay, I was, I was gonna make a joke, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. well, because you're a loser, you know. You okay, know, okay, well, since you said that, I'm gonna tell my joke. You know, they're actually, they did find, uh, an, uh, they did find a letter that was written to like Theophilus that said, that Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke Mark, Luke, and John wrote John, and they had it, but a goat ate it. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey man, that's the miracle of Allah's message because Allah sent the apostles. What's wrong with you? Man? What are you, <laughs> you little sinner? Okay, so Gnosticism, that yeah. dude, that is okay. Now, but now at the second century, like middle to later part of second century, third century, another heresy arose, and that is modalism. Modalism, oneness, heresy, which is interesting. You said it, 
and I don't need to repeat, as Solomon, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes nothing new under the sun. Nothing History new. repeats itself. Yeah. Today we have a group of Christians that believe Jesus is God, but deny the Trinity because they believe that either Jesus is the Father appearing as a man or that he is a human person, a man, and dwelt by the Father. And they're known as Jesus only or oneness, modalist, and they're heretics. They're not true Christians. They worship a false God. They have a false Jesus, a false spirit, a false gospel. But their heresy is not altogether new because in the start of the second century and the third century, there were already groups saying that the Father became Jesus. Jesus is the human nature of the Father. And this heresy is known as patri passionism because they believe that the father suffered on the cross because it was the father who became man. And you have Novatian, Novation, and Tertullian already refuting this heresy and decimating it by quoting the Old and New Testaments to prove that God is multi-personal. Wow. <laughs> okay, so that was another heresy. Wow. But then you had another heresy also that started... <clears throat> Popping up, or you know, prop, uh, popping up, I should say, around the second century, and that's known as adoptionism, where this heresy taught that Jesus was only human; he was just a man, no more, no less, and that at his baptism he becomes divine. God adopts him oh. as his son when he sends Holy Spirit to indwell him, and that's when he becomes the divine son at baptism. baptism. Wow. What was that one called? Adoptionism. Okay. God adopts him. Wow. This is the adoptionistic heresy. You know, I just, just want to say, that in the, when, when Gabriel came to Mary, he says, that thing which is born of you will be called the son of God. Yep. You know, and yep. so he was divine from conception. And What well, all these heresies have in common, mm -hmm. the same MO that Muslims operate yes. under and with. The Bible is corrupted. Oh, it contains elements. Yeah, well, because look what you just said. If you're an adoptionistic heretic, how are you going to hold consistently to the Gospels that say Jesus is already God's son at the conception of his blessed mother? For example, you had a second century heretic who was a very rich uh, businessman, Martian. Martian was very rich, very influential. And he thought that the God of the Old Testament was a cruel, just God, and that Jesus came to liberate us from that God. So what he did was he took the Gospel of Luke, Luke expurgated it, edited, and he took Paul's letters, and he also edited them <clears throat> in order to avoid any and all references to the God of the Old Testament being the God revealed in Jesus Christ. And it was because of his reworking of the New Testament material where he pretty much rejected Matthew, Mark, John, right? And only went with Paul, but an edited, expurgated <clears throat> collection of Paul's letters and Luke edited, expurgated <clears throat> form of Luke in order to get rid of any connection with the God of the Old Testament being the God revealed in Jesus Christ. So that forced the church to say, no, your collection of writings they are not genuine. They are corruptions because you took the writing of Luke, the letters of Paul, and you corrupted them in order to agree with your theology. So that forced the church to then delineate the canon. Here are the writings we inherited oh, from the apostles and their followers. Okay. Here are true copies, accurate copies of what was handed out to us. Mm -hmm. What you have is a corruption. And a selective, a, a highly selective editorial <clears throat> choosing of what you wanted to impose on Christians. What, what suited your theology and what you accepted and what you decided to do, you know, edited these writings and, and foisted them on Christians. Wow. Martian, see? So basically, that's what you find with heretics. They will selectively mm -hmm. choose those parts of the biblical material that they like and either explain away those mm -hmm. parts they don't like or get rid of them, change them. Wow. 
Same thing Muslims do with our Bible, right? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing, man. What about the what about the Ebionites? Was that one of them? Well, the Ebionites, because uh, I know they took yeah Matthew. the Ebionites. They're 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 a weird group because depending on what source you read, the Ebionites believe that Jesus was the biological offspring of Joseph. Joseph sired him, but then you have some scholars who believe that. You had two particular groups who were called Ebionites. Okay. One group that didn't think that Jesus was necessarily sired by Joseph and may have believed the, the virginal conception of Mary. But what these groups held in common is that <clears throat> they pretty much were vegetarians. They also had John not eating locusts and honey because they're vegetarians. He's pretty much a vegetarian. And they have Jesus pretty much celebrating the Passover because they didn't eat meat. So the Ebionites, depending on which scholar you, you read and which branch, which particular group of Ebionites, they either denied the virgin conception birth of Jesus Christ or if they affirmed the virgin conception birth of Christ, they denied <clears throat> the Passover in that they didn't believe that Jesus or those who succeeded him, uh, because they believed they were the heirs of Jesus' successors, ate meat because they happened to be vegetarians, and yet they did believe that Jesus did die on the cross for their sins. They do believe that. Yes, they did. They believe now, that. I thought Waraka bin Nofal was an Ebionite. Nobody knows what Waraka was. There's too many theories because if we go with Waraka ibn Nofal, let's say Waraka ibn Nofal was an Ebionite, then he must have held to that form of Ebionism mm -hmm. that held to the virginal conception birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because if we attribute Muhammad's understanding of Jesus to Waraka, then clearly Waraka affirmed the virginal conception and birth of Jesus yes. because it's taught in the Quran. Yeah. So you can't have Waraka holding to that form of Ebionism mm -hmm. that denied the virgin conception and birth of Jesus, that taught that Jesus was sired sexually by Joseph if he is Muhammad's informant yeah, and yeah. mentor because Muhammad affirms the virgin conception yeah. and birth of Jesus. And he denies the crucifixion, which you said the Ebionites believe. No, the Ebionites affirmed that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Okay. They affirmed that. Now, but see, here's the thing. Did what a deny the crucifixion of Jesus and did Muhammad deny the crucifixion <laughs> of Jesus see that's the debate because you're going with the popular interpretation Belief, right. of chapter 4 verse 157 right. of the Quran if you actually read chapter 4 verse 157 surah 27 157 carefully mm -hmm. you can make a case Muhammad did not deny the virgin conception birth of our I'm sorry not the, because we've been talking about the virgin birth did not deny the, the crucifixion, crucifixion. Yes. and physical body of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Can you tell? Can you just tell yeah, us you how you did? Up, yeah. yeah, I'll yeah, go I'll ahead and sure. bring it up. Now, as, as you bring it up, let me explain what you based it on. If you go by later Islamic tradition, later Islamic tradition interprets chapter four, verse one fifty-seven, as a denial of the crucifixion and death of Jesus altogether. Death via crucifixion. But that's later Islamic tradition, and it's not uniform. In other words, even when you go to later Islamic tradition, they can't agree who exactly was made to look like Jesus and therefore died instead of Jesus because he was made to look like Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Because one of you says it was one of Jesus' disciples. Another view says it was Judas. When he came to betray Jesus as he entered, Allah made him look like Jesus miraculously so that Shubha Jesus was Adam. taken to heaven. Judas was made to look like Jesus from head to toe. And then they came and then they <clears throat> grabbed Judas, not realizing it was Judas, and killed him. Mm -hmm. But then others say it was someone else, yes. right? Yes. What's interesting, though, here's what's interesting, guys. Here's what's interesting. We do not find in the Sahih Sitta, the six major collection collections of Sunni ahadith 
narration tribute to Muhammad, an authentic statement from Muhammad explaining 4157. Wow. Do you know that? No. Wow. Isn't that interesting? You would think that there would be a Muslim who'd make up a saying of Muhammad explaining 4157. As far as the so called authentic narrations of Muhammad are concerned, authentic narrations of Muhammad are concerned, you will not find even a da'if, a weak narration attributed to Muhammad, where they have Muhammad explaining 4157. Wow, that is. Do you know that? Dude. You know what? When I think about it, you know, I've never heard it. Exactly, because what you go with is what, what Ibn Abbas is reported to have said. Because Ibn Kathir uh -huh. will narrate a tradition attributed to Ibn Abbas. Okay. But you, what you'll find in the Hadith stream is that you'll have several contradictory reports, all of which they claim come from Ibn Abbas. Okay. Like the story where Jesus is in the house and then he tells his disciples, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going up. Yeah, that's Ibn Kathir saying this comes from Ibn Abbas. Okay. But notice he only attributes it to Ibn Abbas. The cousin of Muhammad. He doesn't say, and this report from, came to oh, us from, from Muhammad. Muhammad. I see. Okay. See, that's my point. Okay. When they are narrating, they don't say the prophet said, mm -hmm. the messenger said. They attribute it to a sahabi, a companion. Okay. Right? Yes. Now, someone could say, well, then obviously Ibn Abbas got it from Muhammad. Okay, but what's my point, though? They fall short of attributing it yeah, to Muhammad. Yeah, like a kutsi. Right? A they don't say, yeah, it's, it's not a narration of the Nabi, mm -hmm. the Rasul. Mm -hmm. It's a narration of a sahabi, a mm -hmm. companion. Yeah, with this. Wow, yeah. that's that's a whole that's an interesting point, man. It's like, uh, and so because there isn't this in the in the in the hadith, that's why the hadiths are all over the map, right? I mean, you'll have a tradition saying about Ibn Abbas said it was a disciple, but then you have conflicting, contradictory traditions sometimes attributed to the same companion, mm. right? Yes. So the whole point is the. Islamic interpretation of chapter 4, verse 157 is centuries later, okay. though they ascribe it to companions of Muhammad, these traditions are all over the map because you'll find in certain places a tradition attributed to a particular companion saying this is what it means. And then another tradition may also be attributed to that same companion contradicting this other tradition or different companions contradicting other companions on the meaning of the passage. Wow. Right? <laughs> well, it's so unclear. Exactly. It's so convoluted. It says, Shubha yeah. You know, it was made to appear so to them. And I know what we're all taught, and, and Muslims are convinced that that's the case. I mean, I used to believe it. Yeah. Uh, to the death, that this is what happened, you know, the face and all that, oh, yeah. you know, and everything. And, and yet, you now know. Now, let's divorce, separate, the later Islamic tradition from the text itself, because even Muslims will tell you the most accurate way of understanding the Quran, the primary way of interpreting the Quran, the chief way of interpreting the Quran is let the Quran interpret itself. Okay. The Quran interprets the Quran. Right, right. So you need to look at the Quran as a whole to see what the Quran as a whole yes. says about any given subject. Yes. Then you consult later sources or the son of Muhammad. Okay. So with that said, let's see what happens when we let the Quran interpret this passage within its own context, yes. the context of the Quran as a whole. Read for us chapter 4, verse 157, if you know why. Okay. It's, uh, this is it right here. It says, uh, but they neither killed nor crucified him. It was only made but to... But start from the beginning, because we want to know what the context oh, okay. is, who is being addressed, okay. who is making the assertion, and who's being refuted. What call whom, you know, in, in you know, the what it's saying is that the, you see, it starts from the verse before it where the Jews said, We killed the Messiah. So notice who? The Jews. In the context, the Quran is quoting the Jews, supposedly at the time of Muhammad. Right. And the Jews are saying what? Now read their, just read what they're saying and what Muhammad's response is. Call whom inna katalna il Messiah Isa ibn Mary. And they're saying that we killed uh, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. They say the Messiah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you forgot that part. Messiah. <laughs> yes. Umak, they did not kill. Okay. Okay. But if you want to say, we killed the Messiah, you know, that's their boasting yes. was we killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, messenger of Allah. So now, before you read <laughs> the response, the well, first question you need to ask yourself is, why are the Jews telling Muhammad we killed the Messiah, Jesus, the, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah? Why are they saying that? That's the first question. Yeah. Everyone, you need to pay attention to learn how to ask the right questions to get the right answers. Number one, why mm -hmm. are the Jews, if the Quran is accurately re recording what the Jews were saying to Muhammad, why are the Jews boasting to Muhammad, we killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of Allah? That's the first question before you read the rest. Why do you think they're saying it? I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine a Jew saying that. But obviously, if you're going to read the Quran, because that's what you're doing, they are saying that. Why? Why is the Quran recording them saying such? Well, what do you think it is? Even don't get their answer, don't worry about it, bro. That's I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to hear from you because I, you, I, you I know can't, why? Yeah. Because this is their way of saying to Muhammad, are, are you serious? You want us to follow Jesus, the Messiah? What Messiah? We killed him. If he's the Messiah, we wouldn't have killed him. The fact we killed him shows he's a fake like you. <laughs> See, that's the context. <laughs> you understand the context now? <laughs> okay. Because what is Muhammad calling them to? To believe in him, right? Right. But they're saying, hold on, Muhammad, you want us to believe you? The same guy that affirmed Jesus the Messiah whom we got rid of and killed as an imposter? How in the world can you be a prophet? Wow. You see, you see, I just saw something from this passage that I've never seen before, and that is that this when it says call whom the sayings of the jews it was talking about the jews of muhammad's day yeah and why are they telling muhammad dude yeah dude we killed the messiah jesus son of mary possible in other words they're saying you want us first of all to believe you're a prophet but if we believe you're a prophet that means secondly we got to believe jesus is the messiah the same jesus we got rid of as an imposter by killing him mm. do you think if he's the messiah we could we could kill him what are you talking about? <laughs> wow. That, that just shines a totally different light. I, I've never, I've always thought that this is about the Jews of Jesus' day talking. No, because uh, Muhammad is responding to them. Wow. He's talking to them and responding to them oh. and addressing them. And the verses before that even show it because they're insulting uh, Jesus' mother, Mary, because Muhammad is honoring her. He's saying, you want us to believe in you. When you're telling us Mary gave birth to Jesus as a virgin, and we know better. She didn't. She was no virgin when she gave birth to Jesus because they said, it says, they said a calumni, a cal something disastrous against Mary, mm. the verses before. Okay. Right? Well, yes, a disastrous. And then they're saying, and on top of that, you want us to believe you're a prophet and you're saying Jesus the Messiah? What are you talking about, man? We killed that Messiah. In other words, what they're saying is, there's no way on God's green earth he could have been Messiah because if no one could kill the Messiah, and mm. yet we did. Wow. So you see what they're doing? They're wow. killing two birds with one stone. Oh. They're saying, you're no prophet, you're a fraud, and here's why. Because you're mm -hmm. saying, believe in Jesus Messiah, and his mother gave birth to him as a virgin, all of which we know to be a lie, therefore you can't be a prophet. Wow. So their attack on Jesus is calling Muhammad's prophethood into question. Okay. Which is why Muhammad now has to defend. Okay. So do we get that part? This is, you know what? As I've done so many teachings and programs and everything about that, I've never, I've never understood that when it says "kol whom," that that was about the Jews of Muhammad's day. Yes, I thought that was about what the Jews were boasting in Jesus's day. No, remember they can't, they can't um, boast that uh, Jesus's day per se because. Who are they saying it to? Jesus is not around. Remember, he's mm -hmm. supposedly dead as far as they're concerned. Okay. Right? Right. And even if they say it to the apostles, the apostles' response is the tomb is empty. Because mm -hmm. the apostles went around saying, you did kill him. Mm -hmm. Because you're the ones who handed him over yes, to lawless yes. men. Yes. But the tomb is empty. God has raised him. We saw him alive in his physical body, now made immortal and glorified. And we saw him ascend into heaven. So this can't be mm -hmm. Jesus' day. Wow. Right? That's the first time I've ever seen that. Right? Man. It can't be Jesus' day. <laughs> That's amazing. Because the man. apostles are the ones saying, yeah, you did kill him, but God vindicated him. He's mm -hmm. been raised from the dead to expose <clears throat> your lies and slander against mm -hmm. him.
Right. Wow. Right? So it can't be Jesus' mm -hmm. day because the apostles were there responding. Wow. Right? That's amazing, man. So who are they saying it to? They're saying that to Muhammad. And so now Muhammad is forced to defend his claims about Jesus. Oh, because so if they're means. right about Jesus, then Muhammad is a fake. He's a fraud. Okay. Because, hey, Muhammad, how can he be a true prophet when you affirm a fake Messiah? Wow. You see the point? Let yes. me take my jacket off real quick. You get the point? <laughs> wow. I've never thought about it that now, way. Now, now my explanation is going to start making sense. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah. Now my explanation is gonna make sense. Now you're wow. gonna see where I'm going with this. That is awesome, man. Okay, now wow. you ready for the rest? Okay. Okay. Now, now, what's the response? What's the response? What does he say now in response to we killed the Messiah? He says they did not kill him. They did not crucify him, but what? it was made to appear so to them. Okay. So that part, read the part again. That line. They. What does it say? Your translation, but they neither. Okay, they um, they neither killed nor crucified him. It was only made to appear so. Okay, stop there. The Jews are telling Muhammad, "We killed Jesus in order to show Muhammad he's no Messiah." Mm -hmm. So then, what does Muhammad say? They did not kill Jesus, nor did they crucify him, but it appeared to them as such. Now it was made to appear to them. Now that can mean. That Allah made someone look like Jesus and they killed that look alike, or it can mean something more profound and deeper. Now, let me show you the other interpretation that's more consistent with the Quran. You know that phrase that says, They neither killed, killed them nor crucified them, but it so appeared unto them. Yes. Now, I'm going to show you the same language used in chapter 8, verse 17 of the Quran at chapter the Battle of Badr. Go to eight, chapter 8, verse, verse 17, 17 of the Quran. Okay. Moan Abe, he did. Be patient. Muhammad did say that. Yeah, Allah raised Jesus. Okay, 8 what? 17. Now, before you go on, mm -hmm. 817, through the guy whose name is in Greek, because somehow he thinks he's sanctified and holy because his name is in Greek. Uh, Moab Labi. Muhammad did say that in 4158. Allah raised him. So, booyah. Notice he says to me, uh, why didn't. Muhammad just say, Allah rose Jesus from dead. Yes, he did. That's exactly what he said in 4158. Be patient, loser. L for love. He's a Christian brother, by the way, okay. but he's still a loser. Okay. Anyway, 817. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, Surah al Okay, 17. 817. Okay. It was not you believers who killed them, but it was Allah who did so. Okay, now, before you move on, it's not about the battle of Badr. Okay. Where you had 313 Muslims fighting the 1,000 pagans at Badr. Okay. And they slew some of the pagans, right? Right. No, but Allah said, no, you it, did not kill them. Same language. Oh. Oh, let me see in the Arabic. Yeah. Falam tuktuluhum, walakin Allah kataluhum. Okay, you see the same language, right? Huh? Yeah. You did not kill Ma them. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's the same language? Y yes. You did not kill them. They, Jews, did not kill him. Oh. But obviously, no one's going to deny that the Muslims actually killed people. Mm -hmm. They actually killed people. Yes. But no says, no, you didn't. Allah did. Well, how did Allah do it? Did he come down himself on a horse with a sword? And, and you did not throw the spear if you threw it, but Allah Was it, threw but, it. But Muhammad did throw <laughs> oh, Prophet, you did not throw that handful of sand at the disbelievers. Uh -huh. Allah did. But hold on. Did Allah come down and literally throw or Muhammad did? Wow. So Muhammad. who threw that sand according to 817? Uh, Allah did. Yeah, but you're telling me he came down literally and did it? Or was it Muhammad? Who? Okay. It says, oh, prophet, who threw a handful of sand. Let me see what it says in Arabic. Is it? Yeah, it <laughs> says, who, you did not, actually, it says. Uh -huh. You did not throw when you threw. No, nor was it you. You're forgetting that part. Uh -huh. You did not throw when you threw, Muhammad. Nor was it you. That oh, part. prophet, who threw a handful no, of no, sand. No, oh, yes, yes. yes um, nor was it you, oh, yeah, prophet. Yes. You keep skipping that part uh, because yeah. that's not, you're going to get it that way. So Muhammad didn't throw? Oh. Uh, you got light switch, you got to go on. You're going to see the connection, dude. Let me just take a picture of this because uh, I, I gotta, I gotta, 
I gotta really look at this, man. This well, look at it huh? more easier. Translate. I don't know why you keep going with Mustafa Khatab. Well, it's not the clear, clear Quran. It's the confused Quran. Quran. It's clearly confused. Yeah, I could put some other ones. I was, yeah, that so you can see it for yourself for your sake. Because I, I already know what the verse says. Mm, let me see. Uh, go to the Halali Khan. Was that this one? Yeah. yeah, that's that too has a lot of comments, but it's okay. So check it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now read the Halali Khan. Okay. Oh, eight, seven. Oh. Right there. You, you went up? Yeah, no, no, oh, okay. it was one. It went all the way back to one now. Dude. 17. Okay. Dude. Watch here. We're going to get there. Wow, that is uh, sorry, guys. We're just waiting for him to get there. Just be patient with us. This technology, don't check out. Oops, 817. Read what it says. It doesn't, it doesn't go down that far, man. Well, you are, it says verse 17, doesn't I it? I know. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's going it's, back to one. Yeah, but no, let's see. Are you at one? Back to one. I don't know then. I don't know what it is. Let's see. Let's go to. Oh, yeah. See if that'll work. No. Okay, so no, it took you to one. I don't know what you did, but let's get out of here then. I guess we got to go. Sorry, guys. We got to get up a, a good Quran translation because it's not working. Let me try one more time, see if it'll work. Okay, 17. Dude, sorry, man. Yeah, you got to go back and see. Them. You know, it's because my internet sucks, you know, and, you know, sorry about mm. that. So, yeah, folks. But that's, that's yeah, we a gotta great. Get, we, but we have to read it, though. If you don't read it, we're not going to make the connection. We're going to be stuck here till okay. six in the morning, friend. <laughs> so let's go to. Uh, I gotta give you a different Chrome browser because you like this one for some reason. Uh, what's another one? That... Uh, I gotta, I gotta use. I gotta send it to you, or you gotta. Hold mm. on. And I pack my bags. I'm ready to go. <laughs> hey, this is what happens live, guys. You're gonna have to be patient. Why are you complaining? <laughs> Don't complain. Don't hate. Participate. Surah al Spoils of War. Well, see, I, I got to send it to you on your phone, right? I'm trying to get one more time to see if it'll go down there. Okay. Work? Okay, this time it worked. Yes. Okay, read the Muhammad uh, Khan version. Okay. No. Dude. It's got the Yusuf Ali and the Muhammad Hijab version. Okay, we'll read uh, okay. Yusuf Ali. Okay, Yusuf Ali. It was not ye who slew them. It was Allah. When thou threwest a handful of dust, it was not thy act, but Allah's, in order that he might test the believers by a gracious trial from himself. Now read Muhammad Hijab. Okay. You all d d d did not kill them, but Allah killed them. You did not shoot anything when you, Muhammad, threw a handful of stones, but Allah, God, threw them. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. It says, the Muslims did not kill anyone at Badr. Allah did. So does that mean literally they didn't kill them? Oh, kill I see. Yeah. Did they literally not kill anybody? They did. But it says, no, you didn't. Allah did. Yeah. But it was through the agency. Allah did it through. So you them. understand yeah. in the Quran mm -hmm. when it says you did not kill, it doesn't mean you didn't actually kill. Okay. You couldn't yeah, kill yeah. anyone if Allah didn't allow it. Okay. The light switch going? Yeah. Dude, you see now? Dude, this right here is gonna be a good show for me to do. Yeah, you got another show, I'll give you a couple weeks <laughs> yeah. of shows. <laughs> Okay. That is really just good, like man. when it says, "See, wow. no notice." It says, "When you threw, so Muhammad threw, right?" Oh, yeah. But it says, "No, you really didn't. It was Allah. You did not shoot anything when you threw." Yeah. But wait, it's saying you did throw, mm -hmm. but it says, "No, you really didn't, even though you did, because yeah. it was actually Allah." <laughs> in other words, in Quranic language, you can kill someone, uh, and Allah say, "Well, no, you really didn't kill him." I did it. Through because you. if it wasn't my will, you couldn't touch anyone. I see. So now in light of that, is it really saying the Jews didn't kill Jesus? Oh, wow. Now go back to 4157. 
So is it really saying? Wow. Is it really saying you didn't kill Jesus in light of the crime? Is that what it's really saying? Wow, that is that puts it in a completely different light, man. Wow. So now reread 4157. And guys, I am looking at your comments on my phone. So if you're wondering why I'm not looking straight, because I'm looking at the YouTube channel, the comments. Now reread that in light of what I just told you. Okay. Okay, read the uh, Yusuf Ali. Yusuf Ali. Okay. They said in boast, we killed Christ, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but it was made to appear to them. Now let's interpret it in light of 817. Allah says to the Muslims who killed the pagans, who actually literally killed them, yeah. you didn't kill them, I did. Meaning, mm. not you didn't kill them. You would not be able to kill them if it wasn't for uh, me, my will for them to die. Uh, okay. So you Jews, you're boasting you killed them? No, you didn't. You didn't kill him for the reason you thought because you could not lay a finger on him if it wasn't my will for him to die. So when you did kill him, it appeared to you that the reason why you killed him because he's a fake. No, that's how it appeared to you. Nay, I raised him I raised to vindicate him to show you that your killing Jesus wasn't for the reason you thought. Oh. I allowed him to die as a shaheed. Oh, wow. Dude. That's why you got to read it in light of 4158. Wow. Let's look at 4158 here. Let's right. See. Yeah. Let's see. Let me get now, it. when you read a light of 4158, it's not saying you didn't kill him. You didn't kill him for the reason you thought you did, and you wouldn't be able to kill him if it wasn't my will for him to die. So, no, you didn't kill him because he's an imposter. That's how it appeared to you. The proof that you didn't kill him because he's an imposter, because I raised him to myself to vindicate him. Wow. Now it changes everything, doesn't it? Wow, that yeah. is a... In other words, if you read it that way, it's actually affirming they killed him, but God resurrected him and then took him to heaven. And raised him to himself. Rafa'ahu Allah ilayhi to himself. <laughs> wow. So how does that deny the, the death? Oh, wow. And resurrection of Jesus. Wow. And and in light of all the other stuff about the death of Jesus in the Quran. Now it all makes sense. It all clicks now. Yeah. So I see what you're saying. But you were influenced by later tradition to mm -hmm. interpret this in light of later tradition. So right. instead of looking out how it makes sense in light of the language of the Quran itself. Wow. You know that, uh, you know that, I just want to say it one more time, what you said at the beginning of this. Which is that? Well, as you're saying that, move that because I want them to see my Bruce Lee shirt, bro. Mashallah. Sorry, you guys. I have to. We have to endure it's okay. yeah, so you're human saying, weakness and vanity. But that's right. No, Bruce sorry. Lee, baby. And you put Lisa up again. Oh, did, there uh, goes Bruce Lee, man. <laughs> Bruce. Okay, yeah, go ahead. You're saying <laughs> Reno. Um, just that you know that this is a, such an important point that Muhammad, essentially, what you can say is Muhammad actually believed that Jesus was crucified. Yes. Muhammad believed Jesus was yes. crucified and raised. In other words, Muhammad <laughs> is defending the his belief that Jesus is Messiah and showing you didn't kill him for the reason you thought. That's how it appeared to you, mm. that he's an imposter. That's why you're able to kill him. No, Allah wanted him to die as a martyr, and then Allah resurrected him, and now he's alive with Allah. So it is not the case that Waraka would have denied the crucifixion. What if it would have affirmed the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus? Okay. And it's in the Quran, but we've been misreading the Quran yes. in light of later Islamic tradition. Wow. Wow. You see, because that because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make sense. That's why they gotta concoct this crazy. And doesn't it till this day appear to the Jews as if Jesus is a fake messiah because he was killed? Yes. So it appears to them mm -hmm. that his Death on the cross as being killed is mm -hmm. proof of their assertion he's a false messiah. And so that this is <laughs> so that's how it appears to you. The Jews. That's how it appears to yeah. you. Wow. It so appears to you wow. that you killed him because he was a fake. All right. That's how it appears to them till this day. Wow. That is dude, thank you. That is uh, amazing. I've never thought about that, man. I mean, in all the stuff that I've studied, I've never heard of that. So, wow. Thank you so much. That's a great... Uh, so, 
Now, I want the Muslims mm -hmm. to refute me Quranically. I use the Quran to interpret the language of the Quran. Now refute me. Go ahead. Refute me. Cool. Don't give me your later traditions that are contradictory. Use your Quran to refute what I just said. You can't because my interpretation is actually consistent with the Quran. You know, the, the logic, logically, that's a better explanation of shubhalehu. You know, it was made to appear sort of them. You know, that's a much more logical explanation of it than what they concocted. Exactly. You know, so. So the whole point is, just like 817, you Muslims did not kill them. Allah did. Oh, yes, yes. You did not th throw when yes. you threw Allah through. Oh, Wait, so Muslims didn't kill anybody? No, they did. No, it says you didn't kill. See, if I'm going to play that game, I can say Muslims didn't kill anybody at Badr. Because it says you didn't kill them. Mm -hmm. Who did Allah? How? He came down himself and did it. Muslims were just were passive. No, that's not what it means, man. It doesn't mean they didn't kill. It means they could not have killed the pagans unless Allah wanted them dead. Okay. Likewise, the Jews did not kill Jesus. Allah is the one that allowed it to happen. So if I use the language of the Quran to interpret 4157, it's not the Jews didn't kill Jesus. They would not be able to kill Jesus. Didn't want to die, mm -hmm. and Allah did want to die, but not for the reason that the Jews thought. That's okay. how it appeared to them. Okay, <laughs> dude. I mean, this is reaching into more than even just the Islam. It's reaching also into the Judaic, you know, Judaic rabbin rabbinism. Yeah, you to know. The, well, to this day, what did the Jews say? Yeah. Jesus was killed because he's a fake. Mm -hmm. Because that's how it appears to them. Yeah. And what would you say? No. He wasn't killed because he's a fake. That's how it appears to you. Yeah. Because uh, God raised him from the dead to uh, show he didn't die for the reason you thought. That's yeah. the same thing the Quran is saying to the Jews. You, you know what? This remind just this is a, a rabbit trail, but I just want to say because I was watching a video the other day of them talking about rebuild the Jews talking about rebuilding the temple, and I, and this one guy says yes, and this temple will be for the Messiah. Not for Jesus, See? but for the Messiah. Because we killed Jesus uh, because he's a fake Messiah. And yeah. our response would be, that's how it appeared to you. Mm -hmm. It was made to appear to you that by having him mm -hmm. killed, he's a fake. But God raised him from mm -hmm. that. In other words, I would respond the same way the crown did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Wow. wow. That is... So Muslims, use the crown or refute my interpretation. I'm still waiting for that Muslim to do so. I, I, have, I have one guy that... He he loves to come on, but he's scared. You know, he, he he always what he'll do is he'll take this and then he'll make a video himself and and say this is what it really means, you know, and all this stuff. But he won't come on when you know. Who, who's that loser? I think it's somebody who's who you have dealt with. It's Ala Dean. You yeah, know? that guy is a waste of time. Yeah, he's yeah, a coward. But anyway. Yeah. So that's that's so that's the, the reason why this came up, so people don't know because you were saying, what Aqab bin Nofal is an yeah, Ebionite, yeah, and you yeah. thought as an Ebionite. He denied the crucifixion. No. The Ebionites affirmed that Jesus was killed on the cross for our sins. But they were vegetarians, and so they have Jesus celebrating a vegetarian-style Passover. And some Ebionites denied the virgin conception and birth of Jesus. And there's some scholars who say some actually affirmed it. But one thing we do find is that some of them actually do believe he became divine at baptism. So they're okay. like a sort of adoptionists. But if you understand the Quran correctly, that it's not denying that Jesus was killed on the cross, but denying that he was killed for the reason the Jews thought, okay. then Waraka could have been an Ebionite who affirmed the virgin conception, birth of Jesus, his death on the cross, and resurrection and ascension. Wow. Dude, that's gonna take that's gonna take a few hours to get that one. <laughs> huh? But that that opens a lot of doors. That opens a lot of doors, gives a lot of keys to sharing with the Muslims. And the Muslims should join hands with me because I'm showing that the Quran <laughs> is clear enough that you don't need these contradictory narrations yes. that come 100 to 200 years later. Yes, and that make no sense. Exactly. I mean, I know that there, there's this one Muslim guy that wrote about this, the switch, the face switch. He said, it's so inconsistent with who Allah is. Yeah, yeah. And he said, if Allah did that, then when I marry somebody, I think I'm going, you know, this is my wife Khadija, but he could change it. And yeah. it's not really Khadija, it's somebody else. 
This is this is the Muslim even writer. the renowned Persian Muslim commentator Arazi. Uh, Arazi maybe. He's the one that said yeah, that. He said yeah, he he's the one that said. He goes, yeah. once you do that, you destroy prophethood. Yes. Because how do you know that it was Gabriel who actually appeared to Muhammad? How do you know that mm -hmm. Muhammad is actually Muhammad? Okay. Right. That's right. Yes. Because yes. you have in the narrations, mm -hmm. you have in the narrations. There was a jinn, a Karin. Mm -hmm. You know, the Karin, the Karin, Karin, yeah. Uh, Karin, yeah. Karin, yeah, I'm pronouncing it like the American Karen, but it's Karin, okay, a jinn. Did you know Muhammad had a jinn called Al Abiyat? Al Abiyat, the white, yes. But Al Abiyat used to look like Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And so Muhammad couldn't tell them apart. Oh. And they say that it was Al Abiyat that inspired Muhammad to recite the Satanic verses because he thought it was Gabriel. Wow. Okay, so that that's exactly Razi's point. If you can have someone resembling another, mm -hmm. then you've destroyed the entire prophetic credibility of Muhammad. Because how do you know it was actually Gabriel? How do you know it wasn't Satan? Mm -hmm. And then when you add to the fact that the Muslim sources themselves say yeah. that one he of the thought. jinn that was attached to Muhammad, Al Abiyad, the white one, he would look like Gabriel mm -hmm. and he would confuse Muhammad and baffle him because he thought it was Gabriel. Wow. <laughs> and by the way, I have an article on this, guys. Go to my blog because people are saying, seriously, yeah, Lisa. If you go to my blog, answering Islam blog.wordpress.com, mm -hmm. type in the word abiyad, A B Y A D, and the article comes out. And I quote Muslim scholars admitting that among the Karim, Karim, mm -hmm. one of the jinns who was specifically attached to Muhammad, a genie attached to Muhammad to deceive him. He was called the white one, El Abiyad, and he would look like Gabriel, exactly like Gabriel, so Muhammad couldn't tell them apart. Wow. So if you want to go, go to my blog. Okay. Answering so you can give Islam. them the link. AnsweringIslamBlog.wordpress.com. AnsweringIslamBlog.wordpress.com. Because El Abiyad is now in India. AnsweringIslamBlog, B-L-O-G, dot WordPress, WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, now in the search engine when you go. Okay, and then put in this, put Abiyad. Uh, no, no, yeah, when you get there, put there Abiyad. A B Y A D. Click on it. Muhammad's White Devil, that's the one. Wow. Dude, I'm doing this tomorrow. This Are you going to do a show on it? Yeah. You got the sources there, but. Yeah. I've... So, but click on the, on the article itself so you can get the link, not the search engine. Center. Click mm -hmm. on the top. Yep. Mm -hmm. Center. Oh, I see. Yeah, because see. you're going to give them the search engine. Oh, I see. Okay. Now you got the article. I see. Okay. Now give it to them. Okay. Great. You guys, this is a... This is the article, guys. You know, and just so that one of the things that Muhammad said about his Karim that followed him, because he, he told Aisha, he says, uh, he told, everybody has a Karim. Exactly. And then Aisha says, oh, you too, old prophet of Allah, peace be upon you? And he said, yes, but I converted mine to Islam. Well, so it, not this one. This particular one, yeah. you know, Gabriel had to get rid of him. Really? Yeah, yeah. You'll read it says that yeah. he was the one in that post that he gave you the link, guys. You have my permission. Oh, Here's my did, permission. I, did I put yeah, it I on see him? Yeah, it came on. Uh, he, you guys, you have my permission. Take all my materials, translate them, upload them to your YouTube channels, your sites, make clips out of them. That's why I'm writing them. So you can have this information. Use it in the power and the strength supplied by the Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ and destroy this filthy, wicked, satanic religion. And he's a little sinner, and I'm a big sinner, you little sinner. So it says that he's the one who came as Gabriel and put on Muhammad's mouth the satanic verses, which is why Muhammad recited them. Wow. And then Gabriel said, what did you do? It wasn't me. It was Alebius, yes. the white one. Oh, Gabriel says to him, it was Alebius. In the narration, it says oh. it was Alebius. Yep. Wow, I'm going to, wow. Yep. Double check. Yeah, because I'm, I'm memory. yeah I'm gonna see it because I, I mean I've got bits and pieces of the story, but uh, but I didn't. But it's if it's all together like that. Wow. Yes, yeah, it's, it's in the narrations that I cited. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Right. So yeah. there you go, guys. Wow. I you. So, oh, sorry about that. So a Muslim should join hands with me and mm -hmm. saying, yeah, I like your interpretation. It's consistent mm -hmm. because a Muslim can affirm Jesus was killed on the cross mm -hmm. while denying. That he did so far since, because he can say he died as a martyr, shaheed. Mm -hmm. Because they do believe Yahya, John the Baptist, was killed mm -hmm. as a martyr, shaheed. So Muslims, you can affirm, mm -hmm. you can affirm Jesus died as a martyr, mm -hmm. right? Even though we know historically he died because of our sins, but 
Well, in other words, Quranically, you could mm -hmm. still say, yeah, yes. he was killed on the cross, but not for your sins. He right. died as a shaheed. Well, let me just, uh, if I could, you know, because I've, I've done so many, I've done so many uh, uh, program live streams about this because, uh, you know, it's such an important subject. But, you know, I got these verses. Where Jesus is speaking to Allah says, when you made me to die, yes, you became a watch over them. This one, where Allah is speaking to Jesus, if call Allah Ya'isa inni mitwafiku rafa'akilayya. Okay, now read the part of Jesus with the word we use this tawafa because I'm going to show you. I'm going to get you another article. Okay, uh -huh. so repeat that word again. I have in one of my articles, I did a session on the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Inside Bukhari, you'll find the narration. I'll get you the link. Uh, I'll tell you where to go. But let me just narrate it for them. It says that Muhammad, this is inside Bukhari. Muhammad says a group of his companions will be shown to him, but they'll be taken away from him. And he's going to say, my companions, my companions. And it will be said to him, you do not know what they innovated after your death. Oh, okay. And then he's going to say, and I will say in the words of the blessed Jesus, that I was a watcher over them, but when you took me, mm -hmm. you were the watcher of them. Okay. okay, now, but hold on. He used the same word. Then the Mayas, the Muslims, mm. Muhammad said, I will say mm. what the pious slave Jesus said. Wow. But now my question is, how did Allah take Muhammad? He died. But he says, I'm going to say what Jesus said. Like Allah took Jesus, he took me. But how did he take Muhammad? At death. So at how did death. he take Jesus? At death. Wow. Well, you know, uh, this Tawa Faith and Iman. Get, send that to me, man, okay. dude. That's another not another week of programs there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get it to you, <clears throat> or See? I'll have you find it. Lemma to wa faithini. Wow. In the words of Jesus, you know. And then this one, in the mitwafik, God says to him, "I made you to die and raise you to myself." And then there's also uh, this one, which is "Salam alay yom ulitu yom amutu yom abatu hai." Now translate in English for them. Salam alay, peace uh, on me. Yom walitu, the day I'm born. Yom amutu, the day I die. Yom abathu hai, the day I come back to life. Okay, now I'm going to show you why that's relevant. Because in chapter 19, verse 15, it says, Peace be upon John the Baptist, the day he was born, the day he shall die, the day he shall be raised alive. It's mm -hmm. identical. Uh -huh. So then you ask the Muslim, John was born. Mm -hmm. Did he die? Or did he ascend only to return to die later and then be raised? Oh, wow. What was the sequence? Yeah, the sequence He is born, died, died, and raised. And raised. Well, <laughs> the same word is the use of Jesus. He will be born, died, and then he'll be raised. How are you going to have Jesus raised before he dies, destroying the sequence with John the Baptist? Wow. It's exactly the, the identical word, yes. too. Wow. Yes. Wow. Peace be upon John, the day he was born, the day he shall die, the day he shall be raised alive. Well, he was born, he will die, and he'll be raised in the yes. future. But wow. then Jesus is made to say, peace be upon me, the day I was born, the day I shall die, the day I shall be raised. So now they want to destroy the sequence. Mm. They're saying, unlike John, Jesus was born, was raised, will come to die, and be raised again. But that destroys the sequence with John yeah. the Baptist. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, because that I've always known that it's but it says it both about John and about Jesus, but I've never known how to use that. Wow. So you say the order of John yes. is birth, death, and then he'll be raised. Right. Well, then Jesus cannot be born, raised, come down, die, and be raised. You destroy any connection with John mm -hmm. the Baptist, right? Wow. But then let me show you another one that's going to be a problem. Go to chapter 19, verse 31. Okay. Okay. 19 31 dude I jesus, hope you, supposedly jesus speaking right yeah, i hope you guys are writing this down man because this is supposedly really, jesus speaking so what does he okay. say mubarak and okay and he made me blessed wheresoever i be and hath enjoined on me prayer and charity as long as I live. That's zakat, right? Yes, zakat. Okay. So as long as Jesus lives, he has to pay zakat, right? Right. So he didn't die, right? Oh, yeah, he didn't die. <laughs> so who's he paying zakat to? 
<laughs> wow. Who's he paying zakat to? It says Jesus must pay zakat alms charity. As long as he's living. <laughs> so he's alive. He's been alive for two thousand years. So is he paying zakat to Allah and the angels? <laughs> Dude, that's great, man. Dude, you're giving us all these tools. I hope you guys are writing this or you know, watch this again, take notes because you can use all of this stuff, you guys. Now, let me read. This is in the article, if you want. He's got it posted there for you to see. The article of the white one, the al -Abiyat. Let me just read one from my article. Mm -hmm. This comes from Tafsir Muqattil bin Suleiman, one of the oldest commentaries on the Quran. Okay? When the Prophet was sent, Iblis said, Who's, Who is for this Prophet who has emerged from the land of Tihama? And a shaitan called al Abiyat, who was a... Uh, I got a typo here. Good, I caught it. Companion of the prophets. Good, guys. Guys, saw a typo. Glory to Jesus. Sahib al al. I'm sorry. Sahib al Nbiya. Mm -hmm. He said, "I am for him." So he came to the prophet, found in him in the house of al Safa. When he, the prophet, turned, turned al Abiyat stood up in the form of Gabriel, fi oh. surat Jibril, to communicate to him, li. Yuhiya Ilehi. So Gabriel came down mm -hmm. and put his hand between him and the Prophet and pushed him al Abiyat gently. By this, he was thrust away from Mecca and landed in the farthest parts of India. You caught it? Wow. <laughs> Dude, you, you know. It couldn't have been any more scriptural, though, because, you know, it says that, the you know, Satan comes as an angel of light, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, the... Uh, now, for me, that article sound about the Hadith. Go to my blog again. This one? Yeah, search crucifixion, put crucifixion. And put Quran, space, and put Quran and Islam. And space so Islam. My, and then my notes for the lecture should come up. See what comes up. Keep going down because we're gonna have to. No, 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 don't go down to the page. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did it change? Right? No, okay. no, it's just gonna give you several articles. Keep going. I'll mm -hmm. find the title. Sorry, guys, we're looking for it. Keep going. Yeah, and go click on older posts. Older posts. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come up because I want you to get the article. Keep going down. Bear with us, guys. This is all live. We're trying to make the material available free of charge. Keep going. Yep, it's gonna be a while. We're gonna find. Now click on older article, older posts again. I want you to get it because all the notes are there. I'm gonna come up here, right there. The material for my talk on Jesus, death, and resurrection. Now, it's if if you scroll down, let me show you some stuff we're good about it. Well, give them the link first if you want, okay. guys. Here's the link. I, I, I go ahead and copy it, and then you can show okay. me. Okay. Well, we'll... Yeah. So if you and you can post it, or you need me to do this, you copy it. Okay. Let me show you because I'm gonna show you some good stuff. This is all. He's gonna give you a link in a minute, but I just want to take him to. The part that's going to be real guys get just be patient with us when you're live hey all right i'm going to now show show him a section that we're going to read from but let me get there because it's a lot, a lot of material so you have at least a month worth of material here wow. you can show the historical evidence now the quran and hadith on jesus's death so mm -hmm. remember what i just showed yeah. you it's all here see 817 okay i gave it to you right see 817 i'm gonna... okay oh, okay see so i do it for you where it is okay but now let me show you the section i want to show you all right and i show you 1915 1931 33 you see mm -hmm. all the arguments i'm giving you is right here right wow okay now the hadith let's see okay now i show you what Tawaffa means we yeah, give you the lexicon. Yeah, All done for you free of charge, buddy. <laughs> but what I want to show you is the hadith. It's going to blow you away. Okay. Now give them the link because we're going to read this in a minute. But give them the link so they can find. Okay. This, you guys, so that you can find this. So you can go there. And... Okay. Give that to them. Guys, he's going to give you the article. You have my permission. Upload my materials, translate them, make clips out of them as long as you study the materials and use them. Now, in Luke 23, 34, our Lord said, you don't need to go there. I'm going to read it. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm going to repeat what Jesus said on the cross. Sorry about that. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Well, I keep doing this. Sorry. I'm going to repeat what our Lord Jesus said on the cross. Luke 23, 34, he said, 
Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. The soldiers that nailed him. Now, read the Hadiths. Two versions of Bukhari. Sal Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 56, Number 683. Read. Oh, yeah. Muhammad. <laughs> Narrated Muslim. Ibn Mas'ud. As if I saw the Prophet talking about one of the Prophets whose nation had beaten him, caused him to bleed, while he was cleaning the blood of his face and saying, Oh Allah, forgive my nation, for they have no knowledge. What does that sound like? <laughs> it sounds like uh, plagiarism from the book of Luke, man. <laughs> so notice conveniently they don't mention the name of the prophet. The prophet, yes. But Muhammad said he saw a prophet who was being beaten and he wiped the blood from his face and he said, Oh Allah, forgive my nation, for they have no knowledge. Yet it's the only prophet you'll find saying something similar is Jesus, because Jesus is the one who said, after he got beat and nailed on the cross, mm -hmm. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Now, this is Aisha Buley's version. Okay. Aisha Buley also mm -hmm. translated Bukhari. She's more accurate than Mus Muskan Khan in many ways. Okay. Read her version. It was related that Abdullah said, it is as if I could visualize the prophet recounting about one of the prophets. How convenient they don't mention his name. Well, whose people had beaten him and made him bleed. While the blood was running down his face, he was saying, Oh Allah, forgive my people. They do not know. What does that sound like? Wow. Now scroll down a little bit. Now here we got more. This is all here. So you got now how many months of dude, shows I gave you? Dude. That is amazing, man. Okay. Here's this one. Comes from the English Okay. 4330. Read that one. It was narrated that Ibn Mas'ud said, A man among the Ansar said something objectionable about the Prophet, and I could not refrain from telling the Prophet about it. I wish I could have sacrificed all my family and my wealth rather than have uttered it. He said, They annoyed Musa with more than this, and he was patient. Then he told us about, uh, told us that the prophet was rejected by his people and they wounded him in the head and they brought the message of Allah to them. And he brought the message of Allah to them. And he was wiping the blood from his forehead saying, Allah, forgive my people for they do not know. Wow. Now convince me that's not wow. the words of Jesus that has been taken. And yet conveniently, they don't mention his name. Mo Moses is motion mentioned. Yes. You would expect that the other example would be Jesus. Yeah. Especially when the words are plagiarized mm -hmm. from what Jesus said. Yet conveniently, whoever compiled these hadiths didn't say Jesus. Wow. You, you know what this makes me think? Just, you know, the... Uh, yeah. Keep, uh, okay. I'm saying keep on You know, just because I know a lady who was a Muslim, and she read the Gospel of Luke. And she was going through, you know, confusion and doubts about Islam and stuff. And she said that she read the gospel. And when she read the God, when she came to that line, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. She said she closed the Bible and said, you are God, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> because those words are so powerful. We've heard them a billion times. And sometimes you don't realize how powerful they are. And so Muhammad exactly. wanting to show how great he was, he yeah, you know, he used those words. Wow. Now, remember the hadith I told you? Yeah. Sal Bukhari, volume 4, book 55, number 656. Read it. This is it here? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, narrated by Ibn Abbas. Allah's apostle said, you will be resurrected and assembled barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised. Only Muhammad could come up with that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the prophet then recited the divine verse. As we began the first creation, we shall repeat it, a promise we have undertaken. Truly, we shall do it. He added, the first to be dressed will be Abraham. Then some of my companions will take to the right and to the left. I will say my companions, it will be said, they had been renegades since you left them. Okay, this is what you're telling me. Yeah, I yeah. will say then. So Muhammad is saying, I uh, will then say, what will Muhammad say? I will say what the pious slave Jesus, the son of Mary, said. And I was a witness over them while I dwelt with amongst them. But when you did take me up, you were a watcher and over them. What's the Arabic them. for when you take me? 
tawafaitani. <laughs> so the Muhammad said, I'm going to say what Jesus said. When you took me up, uh -huh. you're a watcher now. Wow. Now, my question is, Muhammad is quoting the exact words of Jesus. I'm going to say, uh -huh. like Jesus, when you took me to uh -huh. uh -huh. But that then mean? you ask them, how did Allah take Muhammad, uh -huh. causing him to die? Right. He goes, I'm going to say what Jesus said. Yes. When Jesus experienced the same thing. Oh, wow. So how can you say wow. tawafaytani doesn't mean, mean to die. Allah caused Jesus to die when it's the same word Muhammad yes. used for himself. Yes. And Allah Quoting did cause Jesus. him to die. <laughs> wow. Wow. Good. There you go, friend. Whew. You know, it's like you're uh, you're peeling the onion, you know. Uh, you know, and I've just recently started cooking with onions. That's why I'm saying this. I got a box of onions the other day as a gift. That, what a great gift. But <laughs> so I'm just learning about cut, taking onions. But but dude, that's like you're just taking one peel part of it, taking it and peeling and peeling is like wow. There you go. Wow. So and everything I told you is in those articles. So wow. you got the work done for you. Wow. So I keep telling people, take my materials we have spent because the Lord mm. Jesus called us in ministry yes and bless us just to do ministry so since 1999 I've been writing articles mm -hmm. I have collected these statements all in mm -hmm. articles the homework's been done for you the sacrifice has been done for you all you need to do is study them mm -hmm. understand them absorb them use them like he is see mm -hmm. he's doing what I've been telling people do Dude, learn I teach yeah learn right. teach and now subscribe hit the like like button and pray mm -hmm. for his support because yeah. we need that support all of us to glorify jesus christ that's true but you know like i know i know you know this because i tell you but i always go to answering islam i always do and i get so much from it you know i so appreciate it you, right. you guys sam has done a, a gift to this generation Lord, you, thank you, it's Lord. a gift to this generation you, so that we can see the end of islam in this generation Hallelujah. and see that these people will come to jesus amen Hallelujah. may the lord jesus keep us humble never mm. allow us to get puffed up become mm. proud and arrogant may the lord jesus save us from our flesh to never shame him mm. and fall into sin that mm. will disgrace jesus christ may the lord jesus fill us with love to love him passionately mm. holiness to delight his heart the lord jesus give us super self-discipline and the lord jesus provide his needs mm. my needs my daughter's needs and the lord jesus help me to keep getting healthier mm. and keep this weight up so i can be healthy enough to serve Jesus mm. and not have anything hinder me in Jesus name In fact, some people have been saying hey, man, what do you got cancer? You've been losing weight. No glory to Jesus He's given me the grace to lose this weight and keep it off, but oh, yeah. stop cursing me you guys <laughs> got cancer <Can't> <laughs> In fact, David Wood called me uh, I was wearing st. Patrick's Day just to make fun I decided to buy like these st. Patrick the st. Patrick's Day outfit and I put it on. I had made the foolish mistake of sending him the picture, and I'll show you the picture. And he goes, "Hey, you look like a gay leprechaun." <laughs> a gay leprechaun. <laughs> that guy's mentally uh, challenged, but the God, that's proof that mentally challenged people can be saved. Look, what? him, me, and him more than me, and then David Wood <laughs> takes the king. Do yeah. <laughs> you know one thing that's. Uh... That's that's really amazing is that you're wearing yellow and I'm wearing green and that's the colors of the Brazilian flag So is it? Yes It's Goal! In a football Brazilian. <laughs> yes, and it's in, in Portuguese. It's verde amarelo. It's what a, they call it? Verde amarelo. It's very popular. So. Verde. I'm gonna see if I can find my yeah send it to me so I can show everybody send it to you, But it's so gonna everyone. be on the phone. Now I'll just uh, can you find get it on the phone? Or can you get on the messenger? You can't send it on messenger. Uh, here it goes. Let's see. Maybe I can. Here, guys. Okay. <laughs> Please send it? it. I will. Uh, you see a part right there? <laughs> you see that? Well, you're in the right state. <laughs> Just... Okay, let's see. There it is. So you got it. They got it right there. I'll not send it to you a little later, but they got it. <laughs> little haters. You guys are such haters. You, you know you just do that just so they'll say stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, called, he, he did call me a gay leprechaun, that's for sure. <laughs> that's funny, man. So we finished the crucifixion. Yeah. What did you want? Did you want to go back? Because this all started by because you're asking. Talking me, about the Trinity. Oh, yeah. And we didn't, I did mention another heresy mm -hmm. that led to the Council of Nicaea. Mm -hmm. This is major because everyone and his mother refers to Nicaea. Mm hmm. 
Muslims will mention Council Nicaea. Jehovah's Witnesses. Nicaea does everything. They exactly. they do everything. Everything began with them. As long as <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <clears throat> in the year around the year three eighteen eighty, and again we're trusting the Holy Spirit to save us from error and perfect our ability to recall the facts and scripture for the glory of Jesus in Jesus' name. I don't like to make mistakes. So if you've caught a mistake, let me know so I can correct it. Right. <clears throat> anyway, around the three, the year three eighteen eighty. 318 AD, there was a priest in Alexandria, Egypt, Alexandria, Egypt, named Arius, A R I U S, transliterated. This is <clears throat> this is why you'll often hear us refer to Arians mm -hmm. and Arianism. Mm -hmm. Some people think we're referring to neo Nazis, like no, neo Arian. No, no, we're not talking about the Arian race, yes. A R Y A N. Arian, A R I A N, is a term that we use to refer to someone who believed like this 4th century heretic named Arius. From Alexandria, Egypt, Arius, A-R-I-U-S, in around 318 AD, started teaching Jesus is the first creature of God the Father. Oh, Jehovah Witness. Uh, why do you think we call Joe's Witnesses modern-day Arius? Arius. Yeah. Okay. Arius was influenced by Greek philosophy. And what's ironic, you'll have anti trinitarian saying that the church fathers were influenced by Greek philosophy or paganism, which is why they came up with the doctrine of the Trinity. Actually, it's the opposite. Most of these heresies all stem from Greek philosophy or paganism, wow. not Trinity, not the Trinity. Arius was influenced by what they call Neoplatonic thinking. And I'm not a Greek philosopher, but I read scholars and in Neoplatonism, you have the, the monad. The monad was this divine being that was what we what is called the immovable mover. Mm -hmm. The monad could not be touched by creation. Mm -hmm. The finite so, and the infinite. Because he's yeah. so transcendent yeah. and so supreme. So what he did was he created an intermediary uh -huh. called the Demiurge. The Demiurge did the dirty work for the monad. So the monad created the Demiurge in such a way that the Demiurge could create the material universe because the monad was too transcendent for this type of work. Because Arius was influenced by that, by that, he brought in that Neoplatonic understanding into his Christian belief. So guess who the monad was? The father. Oh, the father. And who's the intermediary that the father created to do the dirty work for him? The Demiurge? Jesus Christ. So it was actually Greek philosophy mm -hmm. that influenced Arius to come up with the view mm -hmm. of Jesus being the Demiurge and the father being the monad. So he basically Christianized mm -hmm. Neoplatonic philosophical thinking. Wow. And sadly, he wrote hymns he was a songwriter and through the influence of music hymns he had everyone reciting hymns praising jesus as the first creation of the father oh my god so it spread like gangrene so you knew you get people to start reciting your heresies wow. because it's it's amazing god has designed the human psyche and the subconscious mind to be able to absorb tons of musical yeah <clears throat> You know, tons of music instinctively, whereas to memorize a book is almost impossible. Wow. But we're designed in such a way where I can hear dozens of songs and memorize them by rote without even trying. Hmm. Like you, how many songs do you just recall instinctively? Uh, right? I, I know uh, I know uh, one of these nights by the Eagles. I know. Right, uh, so many. Take man, it I mean, easy. Oh, oh, I thought you wanted me to listen. No, no, but you get my point? <laughs> yeah. So... Well, how do you learn how you learn the alphabet? A, B, B C, D, E, F, G. Something about us. God has designed us in such a way that we take in musical notes and musical lyrics instinctively, yeah. which is why you can have a, a, a famous singer on stage without notes singing by memory 50 songs that he's yeah. he's yeah. he's played. So Arius, under the influence of Satan started writing hymns exalting Jesus as the Father's first creature. Wow. So this caused a an uproar 
to the point that Christians started coming to blows, beating each other up, and or killing each other. Wow. Now, around this time, around 312, 313, 312 AD, Constantine claimed to have seen a vision in which he saw the cross in the sky, and he was told by this sign, conquer. in this sign, you will conquer. So then he placed the symbol of the cross on the shield of his soldiers and defeated his enemies and became victorious. So he attributed that to Christ and therefore made Christianity the official religion of the empire. But he, he was told the Christians were divided over this heresy okay. and were coming to blows. And he realized, Constantine realized, a divided empire wasn't good because a divided empire could not stand. Like Jesus said, mm -hmm. what did our Lord say? Our house divided cannot, Again, stand. cannot stand. And so he convened a council in Nicaea in the year 325 AD. And he said, look. You guys got to get together and settle this. Wow. According to sources, we had about 318 bishops attending. 302 of them had injuries from these battles. Wow. According to the sources, 302 out of 318 bishops came with injuries. Some were maimed. Some had, let's say, an eye taken out or body part cut. Because these Christians took it to or the point real Christians. where they would come to blows, beat each other, maim each other, if not kill each other. It wasn't a joke for them. Wow. Right? Wow. And church tradition says, guys, Santa Claus was at the Council of Nicaea. Don't believe me? Check Saint, out St. Saint Saint Nicholas. Nicholas. I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah. The man who is the precursor to our S Santa Claus. Santa Claus is based on an actual Christian saint named saint nicholas of the fourth century saint nicholas was known for his charity right being very charitable and giving very sacrificially to those in need the uh, the poor so he was a very pious servant of the lord jesus christ don't take my word for it go to chef google and confirm he was at the council of nicaea it's the according to tradition as Athanasius, the Trinitarian champion, was refuting Arius from scripture and logic. Athanasius was refuting Arius from scripture, the Holy Bible, apostolic tradition, and logic. But St. Nicholas couldn't handle Arius's blasphemy for saying that Jesus is a creature. So tradition says he couldn't control himself, and he actually struck Arius on the mouth because right he couldn't handle his, his heresy. Right on. And then tradition says St. Nicholas was thrown into prison. And according to tra tradition, St. Nicholas had a vision where the Lord Jesus and the Blessed Mother appeared to him. And the next day he was released. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this was another heresy that was quenched at the council temporarily due to the hero of Trinitarianism, the champion of the Trinitarianism, Athanasius, who was also a priest, I believe, initially, a priest of Alexander, of Alexandria, Egypt, who was the bishop of the church in Alexandria. And then later, Athanasius became the bishop of Alexandria, of the church at Alexandria. But people don't tell you this. Now, the heretics will tell you, Constantine forced the Trinity at the Council of Nicaea. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Constantine simply convened the council and let them have at it. Thanks be to the Lord Jesus that by the power of the Holy Spirit, Athanasius soundly refuted Arius's perversion of Scripture, used Scripture to refute him, and appealed to the tradition of the apostles and logic and silenced them so that the Arians were forced to accept the Nicene Creed, which affirmed that Jesus is not a creature. He is one substance with the Father, begotten but not created, uncreated, and possesses the same substance that the Father possesses eternally. But here's what the heretics don't tell you. Here's what the heretics don't tell you. After the council, <clears throat> unfortunately, Constantine sympathized with the Arians. He took the side of Arius oh. and his followers, and he allowed them, by the use of the, his armies, to persecute Trinitarians. Oh. So much so that Athanasius had to flee from his 
Bishoprik, they call it, because the armies would come through the front door and Athanasius had to run through the back door because he would have been thrown in jail if he did not recant the Trinity. Wow. And this happened to him five times. Wow. There you go. Oh, dude, people, man. This is, it reminds me of Gideon a little bit in the Bible. You know, he started out so great and then he messed up, you know, and wow. You know, for me, I just want to say that because, you know, I went, I really struggled with this whole subject so much. And and with the Jehovah's Witness, they're the ones that got me to, to start. Uh, there's a guy named Robert. Modern era. Yeah, because they, they're the ones who, they, a fiery dart from hell. I'm literally, they took a fiery dart from and they fired at my heart right when I was a new believer. And it killed me. It killed me. Killed my faith. Killed everything. I was devastated. But it forced me to go to the Bible and study it. And you know what? And I studied it, studied it in the Bible, and then also, you know, books and stuff. And I came to this conclusion. The Bible shows that the Father is God. It shows that the Son is God. It shows that the Holy Spirit is God. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father or the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father or the Son. But there are three persons that are called God, but there is only one God. Yeah. And so, you know. These are the things that I concluded from the Bible. Now, I don't understand it completely. I don't understand how a computer works. Exactly. I don't understand how I work, but I know that this is what the Bible says, you know? And so uh, thank you so much. For so hopefully by the grace of Jesus Christ, I went by memory mm -hmm. and I thank the Lord, for, Lord Jesus for the gift of his grace that I'm able to recall the facts mm -hmm. for the most part. And I'm trusting I didn't make any mistakes. So that's a brief, short, overview mm -hmm. and notice th what's common with the except of heresy adoptionistic or adoptionism mm -hmm. adoptionism okay all the heresies affirm that jesus is divine they either had a problem with him being truly human or if they believed he was human they didn't believe he was equally divine like the father was right so the only gr group among them that just outright denied the, de the deity of christ were the adoptionists because they believe he was just a man who became divine at his baptism with the holy spirit and dwelt him but gnostics they believe the divine christ so either the divine christ appeared as a man or unite himself to the human jesus arians believe jesus is a god in fact they believe he's the first creature of god and that through him, God created the universe. Mm -hmm. So they didn't think he was just a man. And what's ironic and inconsistent, dishonest, Muslims will even call Arius a true follower of Jesus. Like he was a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And I say, excuse me, uh, Muslims, you know what Arius actually believe? They believe he's the first creature of God and that he is, he is divine, not to the same degree that God the Father is, and that he created everything. That's Islam. He's a Muslim? What are you talking about? No, far from it. Wow. So that was a brief overview. Yeah. You, you know why I, I, I like I really like to talk about these things? Because these heresies exist right now and they're coming back. Yes. They're either are, are here right now or they're coming back. And a lot of Christians are confused. Well, yeah, this makes sense. This makes sense. But you need to know from scripture exactly what scripture says about who Jesus is, who the Father is, who the Holy Spirit is. You know, and so when you look at the uh, at these misunderstandings that they had from this first century, right after Jesus ascended, then you start saying, "Well, this this is just a human mind trying to exactly. understand." You yeah. know, but you got to be based on Scripture. Yes, and that's where you appreciate what John did. John came and said, "In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God." Yeah, you know that Absolutely. way you. You yeah. put it right in your face, right there. I'm going to give you an analogy to John 1 in a minute to show you how you can have two distinct, in this case, persons, mm -hmm. not beings, who can both possess the same nature and the same name without being the same person. Mm -hmm. Now, the analogy I'm going to give you is not identical to God because, as we said, even Muslims would admit, God is unlike anything in mm -hmm. creation. Yes. Nothing's identical to him. There may be analogies, mm -hmm. similarities, but nothing identical. Mm -hmm. So the way God exists, he exists on a whole higher plane, an infinitely more complex plane than we do. 
And so there is nothing in creation that's identical to God's mode of existence. Before I give you, yeah, let me give you the analogy. I was going to make a comment, but let me let me give you an analogy. He just gave you John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, yeah. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is what I want to say before I get off Arius, okay. and I will read that just uh -huh. before I do that. Arius also believed that Jesus created the Holy Spirit, and he didn't have a human spirit. He didn't have a human soul, human spirit, and he created the Holy Spirit. So just to let you know that when I say Joe Witness is a modern Arian, I'm not saying he believes exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. That Arius believe because Jehovah's Witnesses think the Holy Spirit is Jehovah's active force. So he is Jehovah's uncreated active force energy. So he wasn't created. Whereas for Arius, the Holy Spirit is a creature of Jesus. Just wanted to okay. make sure. So, but they're Arian in that they believe Jesus is the first creature mm -hmm. of the Father. Now, coming to this example, now you're going to have to use the King James for this. Oh, okay. He just quoted to you John 1, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the word was with God. He's with someone who's called God, and he happens to be God. But the word is not the same as the God he's with. Now, does that make sense? Yes, because I'm going to show you an analogy, something similar but not identical. Authorized version? That's right. Go to Genesis 5, verses 1 and 2. Okay. Watch here, guys. Okay. Let me show you an analogy, but it's not identical. Genesis 5, verse 1, to read it for us. The book of the generations of Adam. Oh, let, let me put it up so people can see it, too. Let me just share it. Okay. Okay. The book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God he made he him. Male and female created he them. Them, the them is who? Them he created? Who's them? Man. <laughs> no, read them. What? Who's the them? Read the first line. Who's the them? Adam. No. Huh. Male and female created he them. So the them is? The male and female. Okay. Male and female. Two, right? Right. Female's not the male. Male's not the female, right? Right, right. He created them, male and female. Now watch them. Watch what it says. And blessed them. Them. And called their name Adam. <laughs> and the day? In the day they were created. Okay, now you confuse me. The male who's not the female. They're two separate persons yeah. and beings. Yes. Right? right? The male and the female, both their name is Adam. Oh, wow. Right? Male and female, who's also Eve, their name is Adam? Wow. <laughs> Is that their name, Adam? Yeah, that's what it says. And who called them Adam? God. Their creator, God. Wow. Okay, but now called go to Genesis 4, verse 1. Okay. Genesis 4, verse 1. Okay. okay. Genesis 4, verse 1. And read for me. This verse 1. Just read that. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Okay, so Eve is the wife of Adam. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of creation, there was Eve. Eve was with Adam, and Eve was Adam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because then he's, didn't you just read Genesis yeah. 5, 2? Eve's name is Adam, and her husband's name is Adam. Right. The male and female, both of them are Adam, but they're okay. not the same person, not the same being. All right. So Eve is married to Adam, so she's with Adam, All and right. Eve is Adam. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Say that again. Say that one more time. Sir. Okay. The At beginning. the beginning of creation, there was Eve, and Eve was with Adam, her husband, and Eve was Adam. <laughs> didn't, you, didn't you read for Genesis yeah, 1 Yeah, I just did. Wow. Uh, so, so just like you can have Eve mm -hmm. being with Adam, the male who's her husband, mm -hmm. and then also being Adam without being the male, mm -hmm. being different from the male, but also being Adam like the male because they have the same nature. You can have Jesus, the word, who was with God mm -hmm. and God in nature. Mm -hmm. So he's with God mm -hmm. and happens to be God, mm -hmm. but he's not the same uh, God course. that he's with. Because yes. the God that he's with is his father. Mm -hmm. Like the, the Adam that Eve is with is her husband. Mm -hmm. But like her husband, Eve is Adam in nature. Mm -hmm. 
And like his father, the word Jesus is God in nature. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is, that's very good, man. Wow. And I really like, I've heard you talking about Genesis 126. Yeah. Uh, could you do that? Oh, yeah, we can do that too. Yeah, I really. That, because that's part of it too, right? Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard you do that. And that just is. Hmm? Now, you guys listen to this. This is really amazing. I've used this many times. I heard you do this and then I, yeah. I used it many times. So read, read for us. Now, before he reads, up until verse 25, God has been creating by simply commanding things into existence, mm -hmm. saying, let there let be a there light, be. let there be this, let there be that. But now, in 26, God changes the way he creates man and the way he speaks of the creation of man. Up until this point, he would say, let there be light. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to man, he now changes the way he speaks about creating man, because now notice the difference. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and fowl of the air and the cattle and over every, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, now we're not going to read the entire verse again, but I want you to read verse 26 and I'll tell you where to stop. And God said, let us make man in our image okay pause there man the hebrew word for man is adam so you can say let us make man in our image but now notice god says us mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. our yes adam will be in our image after our likeness oh. so we are going to make adam okay god is now saying we us will make an adam in our image in our likeness mm -hmm. but then that man all of a sudden becomes plural again because it says let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Oh, <laughs> Dude, that's the first time I saw that. I always talk about the hour and that, but I never looked at that. The them. Wow. So wait, the one man, Adam, is them plural? Wow. Let that sink in for a minute. Wow, that is very good, man. Dude, let me just copy that too here. And I'm going to explain to you why. Okay. Let me just move me. Okay. okay, you ready? Ready. So notice, Adam, Adam, man, mm -hmm. is them, plural. Yes. So the one man is more than one person. He's plural. Like the one God is more than one person. He's plural. Us, mm. our, our. Mm. Oh. So the first connection between God and man is, like God, man is a community of persons in fellowship of same essence. Wow. <laughs> That's the first mm. likeness between God and man. Wow. Right? Dude. Now read 27 to see who that man is, who the them are, slowly. So God created man. Adam, man. In his own image. In the image of God created he. Him. So now notice, God created Adam, him. Mm -hmm. Adam is a him, singular, him. Right. So God created man, him, in God's own image. So now God is a him, his. Mm -hmm. So one God, one man, right? Mm -hmm. One God, his own image. But in verse 26, that one God, his image was our image, our likeness. So he's one in many, many in one. And man is him. God created him, man. Him singular, right? Yes. But then I'll read the second part. Male and female created he, them. Okay, I'm confused. So the him, who is Adam, is them, male and female. Are you with me there? Yeah. Okay, think about it. Adam is a him, but that Adam who's a him turns out to be a them, male and female. Male and female, them, is the one Adam. They are the him. Let it sink in before we move on. <laughs> wow. Did it, so you see? Yeah, yeah. Adam is a him, right? Yeah. God created Adam. God created him. Mm -hmm. But then that Adam is male and female, them. 
That was Genesis 5 2. What did he call male and female? He called them Adam. Adam. Wow. Okay, so did that sink in? Yeah. So what is God showing you? Not physical, he's not bodily, right? And he doesn't have a physical body that's composed of male and female genitalia. So when it says he made man in his image, it's not talking about the physical body of man. Mm. Here's how Adam resembles God. Mm. Adam is a community. That mm. one Adam is a community of more than one person, more than one being, mm -hmm. of like essence and nature in fellowship. Mm. Male and female, they possess the same nature of Adam, humanity, and they're called to be in communion fellowship as a reflection of the one God who's a community of more than one person of same essence and nature that have fellowship with one another. Hmm. That's why God, when he creates Adam, now speaks of himself, the one God, as an us and an our, to show that Adam is going to reflect the one God who is more than one person, that one God is a community, us, our, of persons of same nature, of fellowship. And so Adam is created to resemble that aspect of God, that Adam is going to be a community of more than one person of same essence in fellowship. Wow. Wow. You know, this kind of makes me go to to jump to John 17 when Jesus is praying and 100%. says, let them be one, one as I am in you. No, that's exactly are... right. That's the mm. connection. Because why? Because of the fall, mm. that unity of mm. Adam has uh. been destroyed. So Jesus has come to restore mm. all those who are the one Adam to be one again. Mm. Like the Godhead have oh. always been and will always be one. Wow. Now one person. Just like Jesus' followers are not one person. Mm -hmm. There are a collection of human persons and human beings mm -hmm. who come together mm -hmm. in unity and mm -hmm. fellowship. They have the ability to be like God. Yes. Let them that's be one it. as I am in you, you are in me. That's exactly it. Yeah. So that's why from the beginning of Genesis, God has revealed himself as a God who's more than one person. I am a God who's more than one person who's in perfect fellowship and union, and those who are the one God are identical in their nature, but different in their person. Just like Adam is a community of more than one person who are identical in their nature, but are different in their person. Mm -hmm. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Dude. I mean, I've heard you talk about this before, but this is a little bit deeper than the last time I heard you talk no, about I've it. No, I've so. gotten, I have a session where I go really in deep on this. Wow. But I got so many sessions, hard to find. But now, let me put the icing on the cake. Go to Genesis 2, when God creates Eve from the side of Adam, right? Mm -hmm. Read Genesis 2, 23 to 25. Genesis 2, 23 to 20, 24. Not 25, but Genesis 2, 23 to 24. Okay, 23 and 24. And now when God created Eve out of the side of Adam. Right. Now, guys, if you read the word for rib, where it says God put Adam in a deep sleep mm -hmm. and cut his side open and from his rib fashioned the woman. The Hebrew word for rib means side. Mm. Okay, so God put Adam in a deep sleep. Pay attention. Deep sleep. Cut his side open and from the side fashioned the woman, brought the woman to him. And then when Adam awoke, he saw the woman. What does he say? Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now, before you finish, let me explain what that is. The word woman in Hebrew is isha. Mm -hmm. The word for man is ish. So in Hebrew, the word ish can mean man or husband. So he says, she'll be called isha, female form of ish, because she came out of ish. Since Eve came out of Adam, she has the same nature that Adam has and therefore is just as much Adam as Adam is and therefore is equal to Adam in essence, nature, and value because how can she be inferior to him in value when she came mm -hmm. from him mm -hmm. and her nature is from his nature, mm -hmm. right? So they're wow. equal, right, in yeah. nature, yes. in essence, in glory. Mm -hmm. So much for the claim that the Bible denigrates women. Right. But let's take it a step further. 
Notice he says, her bone is my bones. She was fashioned from my bones. Her flesh is my flesh. So she's equal to me in nature and essence and glory and value. Therefore, she'll be called woman because she's from man. Isha from ish. And etymologically, woman means from the womb of man. Mm. Woman, womb mm. of man. Wow. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now read 24. Um, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now the word for one is echad. Hebrew echad. says the male and the female through their intimacy, their physical bond of sexual intimacy, which is a gift that God gives only for husbands and wives in marriage. Mm -hmm. They will become basar. The word flesh is basar echad. Notice two persons are echad. Just like in Deuteronomy 6, 4, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is echad. Mm. Same Hebrew word for one. The Lord our God is echad. Mm. One. Mm -hmm. Like male and female are echad, one flesh. Wow. So even the word one to describe the male and female and their union mm -hmm. is the same word for one used to describe the God who made them. Here is the Lord our God, the Lord is Echad. Yahovah Eloheinu, Yahovah Echad. Basar Echad. Wow. <laughs> oh, dude, that is amazing. Echad, Echad. You get it? Oh, but I got a little more for you. <laughs> wow. Just like. Let's continue to show how Adam and Eve are a picture of Jesus and his church, the bride. Are you ready? Yes. Read Genesis 2.24 again. 2.24, okay. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now here it's talking about Adam and Eve, right? But the whole Bible is inspired. True history, actual history that God guided to point to a greater reality, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me show you how from the beginning, God designed Adam and Eve to be a picture, not just of the Godhead, but of Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Go to Ephesians 5, 30 Ephesians 5. to 32. Sure. Ephesians 5, 30 to 32. A lot of meat in this session, man. Wow. I know you won't mind me uploading it, so I can also no, get more traffic for you. Kidding. Absolutely. At 5, 30 to 32. Yeah, Ephesians 5, 30 to 32. Watch what happens. Okay. For we are members of his body and flesh, uh, of his flesh and of his bones. So the church of Jesus Christ, the church of Lord Jesus Christ, which is a spiritual body, are of his flesh and of his bones. Wow. Now read what Paul quotes. For uh, even as the Lord and the church, for we are members of his body, his flesh and bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. So what did Paul just quote? D Adam. <laughs> Genesis 2.24, right? Yes. Uh -huh. But no, Paul says it wasn't about Adam and Eve. It was always about Christ and the church. Oh. Because notice 32. Okay, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So Paul is telling you, look beyond Adam and Eve, because yeah, Adam and Eve was a picture of Christ and the church. Wow. Wow. So it tells you that from the beginning, God designed Adam and Eve to be a picture of Christ and the church. Wow. Okay. Now, let me show you how Adam and Eve are a picture of Christ in the church. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Adam was created from the dust after a mist, a watery mist, came upon the ground. And then God fashioned Adam from the ground, right? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. Now, Go to John 7, 38 to 39 to see how the Lord Jesus describes the Holy Spirit. Watch here. I'm going to go real deep on you. Okay. Then maybe we'll make it a fine because I think we're already two hours, right? <laughs> Almost, dude. Yeah. John. John 7, 7 38, 39. You can read any translation now. It's up oh, to okay. you. Okay. Okay. 7, 38 to 39. Yeah. Okay. Watch here. Okay. 
Okay, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So now, what are the rivers of living water? He's going to explain. Rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. Living water. Who are? Read 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost had, was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, so you guys see? Living water refers to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is described as living water, water that gives life. So the water becomes a picture of the Holy Spirit. Don't forget that. Mm -hmm. Jesus was conceived to and born of a virgin maiden. Mary was a virgin, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, and water becomes a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Keep that in mind. A virgin woman conceived by the Holy Spirit the physical body, human nature of the Lord Jesus, the last Adam. And I'll give you the references. We won't read them. They'll write them down. Write down Matthew 1, verse 18. Matthew 1, verse 20. Matthew 1, verse 18. Matthew 1, verse 20. And then Luke 1, 34 to 35. Okay. Don't forget, Mary, virgin womb, caused to conceive by the Holy Spirit, the physical body, human nature of the Lord Jesus, last Adam. And water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Genesis 2, verses 4 to 7, to see how Adam was created. Genesis 2, verses 4 to 7. Genesis 2. Watch what happens. Okay. Okay. Now these are the generations. You want that? Just yeah, no, it's true, yeah. Now these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not yet caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Wait, so. The ground that Adam was created from was virgin soil, virgin ground, because no man had tilled it or planted seed in it. Mm. So Adam was born of virgin soil. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Read that uh, part. No man had done what? Read that part again. For, uh, okay. For there, for there was not a man to till the ground. But there went a mist out of the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So he came out of virgin soil that had been watered. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Making sense? Yeah. Like Jesus, Adam was born of virgin soil, mm -hmm. virgin womb, virgin ground that had been watered. And we know water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And then he had the breath of life, the Holy Spirit, animating his body by giving him a human soul. Wow. Right? Yes. Wow. Okay, now, how did Adam receive his bride? Okay, now, let me show you the word sleep as a metaphor for death. Go to John 11, verses 11 to 14. Hope we didn't put the people asleep in the <laughs> YouTube. I hope you guys are still following us. We're almost done. John 11. 11 to 14. John 11, 11 to 14. So, okay. I don't see any comments, but go ahead. Yeah, read for us. Sleep becomes a metaphor for what? After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Mm -hmm. What does sleep refer to? Because they didn't get it. Keep going. Uh, and they said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death. So, sleep is a metaphor for what? Death. Death, right? Yes. And then finish it, what our Lord says, all the way to 14. Uh, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. Let us go to yeah, him. Yeah, you gave me an extra verse. That's okay. But what does sleep mean? Dead. Dead, yes. Sleep is a metaphor for death, right? Right. So when you, go, when you die, we say you went to sleep. Right. Okay, now go to John 19. And read verse 14. What did the soldier do when Jesus died? Mm. We're almost done, guys. This will be our final point. No, We're almost two. done. A few more minutes, we're going to wrap it up. John 19, 17. Oh, 17. I'm, I'm sorry. 
14. John 1914, dude. 14. Uh, no, no. I think it's John 1934. I was going to say, yeah, I know. John 1934. Sorry, see, see, it's getting late. We're all shutting down. Because <laughs> I always quote John 1914, 17. John 1934. My apologies. Okay. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. Now, remember, Jesus had already died. Mm -hmm. Jesus had already died. In John 19, 30 to 33, it said, Jesus breathed his last and gave up the spirit. All right. And when the soldiers saw that Jesus was dead, Already they were shocked. Dead. So to make sure that he was dead, they pierced his side. And what came out of his side? Blood and water. Now, why the blood and water, this physical act? Because the blood of Jesus is what cleanses you of sin. Mm -hmm. And the water from his side represents the living water that he gives you, the Holy Spirit of life. Wow. Meaning it's from his death that you receive the purification from sin by his blood. And are given the gift of living water, the Holy Spirit. Wow. So his death is what gave birth to the church. <laughs> his death is what results in sinners Hallelujah. being washed in his blood, receiving the living water, the Holy Spirit of life. Hallelujah. Right? Thank you, Lord. But when did that blood and water come? When he was asleep mm. and his side was cut open. Mm. Now Just go to like... Genesis 2, 21 <laughs> to 22. Mm -hmm. We're done. After this. Genesis 2, 21 to 22. Okay. Two 21 and 22. Okay. Watch here. I'm looking at the comments. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping... He took one of the man's ribs. Now click on the G on the NIV. It's going to tell you what the ribs means. Click on it. Part is, of the man's side. So the Hebrew means side. Mm. So guys, like Jesus, Adam mm. was put in a deep sleep. Mm. Like Jesus, Adam had his side cut open. Wow. And like Jesus, from that side, God fashioned a wife for Adam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You got uh, it? Yeah, that's awesome, man. Wow. That is... Uh, so Adam had to go to sleep mm -hmm. in order to have his side cut open, in order to have his wife fashion from his side mm -hmm. that was cut open, mm -hmm. just like the last Adam went to deep sleep and had his side cut open in order to give birth to his bride, the church. Wow. That is so powerful, man. So now let's put the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. Guys, notice that Adam's bride was taken from his side. She wasn't taken from the crown of his head, so she wouldn't rule over him. Mm -hmm. Nor was she taken from the crown of his foot, foot so that she wouldn't be beneath him. That man would rule over her. So the woman wasn't fashioned from the heel of man or the foot of man, so she wouldn't be beneath him. Nor was she fashioned from the crown of man, the head of man, so she wouldn't be over him. Mm -hmm. She was fashioned from the side of man, so she could come alongside of him as his partner. Mm. Wow. We're done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing, you guys. Wow. You know what? You know what? What? I mean, I've heard, of course, you know, these verses and everything. But, you know, today what it really did is it really showed that for once, rather than that God is looking back to a picture of Adam and Eve to teach us about his plan for the church, rather he created Adam and Eve as a picture of what exactly. Jesus and the church are going to be. It's not the other way around. The, Adam and Eve, they're a picture the of the future. exact yeah. opposite, yeah. And, and that's awesome. why, folks, Satan is raising up people to destroy your belief in Genesis. Yeah. You have people who want you to believe Genesis is not true history, yeah. true science, mythology, because Satan knows that the foundation mm -hmm. of our faith is the Genesis story. Mm -hmm. If you can get someone to doubt Genesis, then you've destroyed the foundation of what comes later mm -hmm. and destroyed the picture of Adam and Eve as a picture of Jesus Christ in the church. Wow. Dude, that, that really uh, just puts everything into the... It just turns it on its head, in the but the right way. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we've already seen. I mean, Paul was very clear. He said all these things 
are about Christ. He said that. Yep. And yet we always kind of just said, okay, yeah, right, symbolism. But it's not symbolism. It, if, any, if you want to call something a symbol, Adam and Eve are the symbol. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. They're yeah. all a picture of Christ, yeah. not a Christian, Christ's a picture of them. Wow. So That's... glory to Jesus. You got a lot of meat. Rewatch <laughs> wow. this. That's amazing. Hit the like button, subscribe, pray for his ministry support. Yeah. I'll be uploading it to my YouTube channel so I can bring more awareness and yeah. more traffic and subscribers. Yes. Guys, I just want to end it by saying pray for both of us. Yes. Pray for his health, my health. Ask the Lord Jesus to keep giving me this discipline he's given yes. me Hallelujah. to lose this weight, keep it off so I can get healthier and use our health, not for vanity, but to glorify Jesus. Mm -hmm. Pray for his ministry, financial support. And if God is pleased to bring him a godly spouse, to be a partner with him, to come alongside of Adam him, Eve, pray yes. the Lord Jesus will Adam protect Steve, my daughters. Um, well, yeah, Adam and Eve can be fruitful. Adam, Steve can be fruits, but not fruitful. <laughs> okay. Pray the Lord Jesus will miraculously protect my daughters yes. from this godless and moral relationship that their mother has exposed them to. Pray the Lord to bring them to me so I can see them grow up. And if the Lord tarries, may they outlive me and I see them grow up. Pray the Lord Jesus grant me traveling mercies as I drive six hours back. And then fly out to Florida to do ministry there if the Lord Jesus pleases. And pray for holiness and purity, that we love Jesus and obey Jesus, not be lip service. And pray for the support for our ministries, so that if God wants us to do it, he'll support us. He doesn't need us. We need him. Right. And take our material and multiply it for the glory of Jesus. We love you guys. Thank Christ you. is risen, risen indeed. Amen. Come, Lord Amen. Jesus. And uh, you guys, by the way, if any of you, I will be with El Fadi tomorrow at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Uh, Pacific time. So, you know, try to. That's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. Yes. All right. God bless you guys. We love you. Remember. We love you, Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, in Jesus' Amen. name. And we love you for the sake of Jesus. Hallelujah. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Thank you, Sam. That was.